in this container here, I have some of my light green coarse turf, and this here is Woodland Scenics light green coarse turf. You see, they're very, very similar. Now, in here, I have some uh, dark green. This is um, a Woodland Scenics dark green. Slightly darker, or should I say slightly bluer than mine. I'm not really a big fan of this colour, so I've just let my own version go slightly more green than blue for this one. But of course, you can do that to taste. So, as with all of my lighter greens, I shall do one, two, three, oops, four, five, yellow, to one, blue. And I'm going to mix that up now and uh, see how that looks. So in here now, I have that green that I like to start with. Very natural, mustardy kind of green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, raw sienna again, but for the light green, really really is a small there that's all I'm going to use now we're not quite there but we are in the same region I'm going to add another very very small amount of the Sienna. Now you have to be very careful with this because the the raw Sienna will turn your green brown in an instant. So if you go over the top you will just get mud very very quickly. So it's important that you just add small amounts at a time. So now let's just try, oh, so I'm trying to move around the camera here, let's just take a, remember it's, this is wet paint, it's kind of shiny, but let's have a look and see where we are. Now that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good, I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep that for the mixture now. The reason why I'm mixing the paint up now, this is the colour that I want. Acrylics, they change colour when they dry. But usually that's because of the water that's added. This is a, a reasonably good quality paint. It's not school grade. It's artist acrylic. I mean, this is cheap, this one. This was only, this, that's three pounds on a special offer for well I don't know but it there's <laughs> a big chunk of paint there um, this is a good quality so it's not going to be as watery so you, the, what I mean to say is the colors will stay fairly stable now I've got the color that I want there I'm going to use water as a means to transport the paint around the foam to spread it around so it may change color but it should go back to this colour. I'm not sure how well this will come out in the in the video but you'll see this sponge is slightly more orange than this one. This is more yellow, it's quite lighter. Now I found for these greens the the richer more orange sponge is better than this one for these lighter greens. So there's the sponge going in. I will 
mix that in and come back. So that's going in really well. And what I do, as I said before, is I will take the foam and I will squeeze the paint out of it and then pick it up again. And that way I know that the paint is mixed in really well. And you can see already the, the colour that we're getting from there. So I'll just finish mixing that. Doesn't take long. And I'm very happy with that. Now, the, the acrylic paint dries slightly darker, but to be honest, I think the colour of the foam, it has its own brightness that seems to come through anyway. I've noticed, to be honest, that I don't get much of a difference. I thought about trying to make it a little bit darker, but I am happy with the result because it's not 100% important that I get an exact match to that. That's just my guide. As long as what I'm making is compatible and it looks pretty much the same on the layout, then that's all I need. So there you go. That's half a sponge. That's the, the colour that I'm trying to get to. And I'm very happy with that. So there's uh, 25 pence worth of sponge. And I don't know, what, what shall I say? 35 pence altogether. 50 cents. Not bad. Okay, now for the dark green. With all the light greens, the ratio is always more yellow than blue. As you can see, for the light ones, I use 5 to 1 ratio. For the dark greens, it's the other way around. So we're going to do 2 blue to 1 yellow. So it's a ratio of 2 to 1. So for this, I'm going to put 2 yellow. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, blue. Now, I'm making this video under artificial light, um, but it's a good idea to check your colours under natural light, so take it to a window. The light green that I just made was slightly too yellow so I added a very small amount of blue to the mixture and then massaged it in again and it came out just right. Um, I'm going to take a piece of this and put it on the card there uh, just as a, a reference. And I'm going to mix this colour and I'll be back. So I've got the paint mixture in there I'll get some on the palette knife and I'll bring that over the camera you see that we're already very close in fact I'm not going to mess around with this I'm gonna keep it like that and then I'll check it by the window and I'll see if I need to add any more it will probably be blue if I need to add anything so I'm gonna put some water in there only a small amount mix it up so and I have a reasonably creamy consistency there. It's not water but it's just liquid enough to mix well with the sponge. So the foam's going in and I just turn the foam around to as if I'm just trying to mop up the paint. That's how I get it going. Just clean the bowl with the sponge with the foam and then I can start to work it in. Nothing happens at first. But you'll see it start to come together.
So already you can see that that's really got a lovely coating of that colour and it's still quite rich. Let's see. That's the colour we're going for. I wonder if we're close. Very. Bearing in mind this is wet, it will dry up slightly darker. So I'm going to take that to the window and double check it. And I'll see if I need to add. Now, in the same way I did with the last one, I'm just going to add another half a serving of blue into that one. Okay. Let's add another blue. Let's see now if we are any closer to where we want to be. Let me see. That's perfect. That's perfect. There will be a slight change, as I say, when it dries out, but not enough to cause a problem. What I will say, at this point here, you can take the mixture and just hit it with the scissors like this. Take some of that and just hit it with the scissors. And you've got underbrush. You won't need to do anything more. I like to do, if I'm doing underbrush or anything large, then I like to do this when it's wet. find that it helps to the paint in the final mix when it's dry but I will be sieving this this is going to be coarse turf this is going to be for my leaves actually leaves for the foliage and the trees but doing this a few times at the beginning makes life easy uh, later on so there you go look a dark green Woodland Scenics compatible colour. Homemade. I'm going to put that by the window with the light green. That's one sponge altogether. Half for the uh, light green and a half for the dark Thanks green. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll have a go at this yourself. Really is easy, very cost effective. If you're making, if you want to make fine turf ground foam, then this isn't going to save you a fortune against the amount of work involved. But if you're going to make coarse turf, all your foliage, clump foliage, um, underbrush, all sorts of things for your bushes, then you can just make tons of this, and you will save a lot more money. I reckon you'll 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 be 75% cheaper doing it this way and the thing is that when I sieve this down, as I sieve this down what comes out at the end is fine turf, that's the stuff that I don't use so in time once you've done a few of these once you've done two or three sponges you'll find that you've got a bag of fine turf in the same colour uh, as a residue which of course you keep and use so in a way you get your your fine turf anyway okay all right thanks again have fun and uh, all the best